It's where uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa is addressing the Lokhotla country. Let's go there now live. So as a result, they have said I should be removed from all places where I was meant to be. And I'm sorry about this. I would have loved to have been there. I know that over the next three days, you will be charting the course of what I would call a reimagined, better regulated and empowered industry. The taxi industry is the lifeblood of our public transport system. If there ever is a transport system that is not only the lifeblood, but is the sinews and the muscles of our economy, the taxi industry is unashamedly so you play a very key and important role in the transportation of our people since the late 70s the taxi industry has served our people by providing an accessible means of public transit in nearly every corner of the country the taxi industry emerged at the time when apartheid special planning severely restricted people's access to safe and reliable transport. I've often said that if you really wanted to see the effectiveness of a black-led, black-operated, black-owned industry, that is the taxi industry highly empowered, original, and it is an area that you as black people have set up your own ecosystem of an industry and you have excelled in and you have built it to be a very important industry. From its humble beginnings of a few operators, mainly in the urban centers, the industry has grown from strength to strength and it has grown by leaps and bounds. Today, the vast majority of transport commuters use taxis followed by buses and trains. The industry is a major source of business creation with approximately 150,000 taxi business owners in operation and nearly all of them black, which represents the real texture of the ownership of the taxi industry. The industry makes a major contribution to employment, both directly by providing jobs to drivers, queue marshals, conductors, and car washing services, and indirectly by transporting millions between home and place of employment it is estimated that the sector employs in the region, and you will know better, of about 400,000 people directly, while it links with providing businesses to the sectors of manufacturing, provision of supplies, fuel, maintenance, repairs, you name it. Taxis have been found to cater more for individual needs than other forms of mass transportation while fulfilling the demand at a lower investment cost than that of pub private transport. Taxis assist in bringing bread to the table, providing a road to education, and building community networks. The taxi industry thus plays a critical role in the lives of commuters and to the economy as a whole. So therefore, as an industry, I want you to know that you play the most important role in the economy of our country. And this makes your industry all the more necessary that there is transformation and empowerment with real benefits to the businesses that are involved. High barriers to entry, such as the cost of vehicle financing and maintenance, threatens your business viability. 
badly maintained and old vehicles threaten the safety of passengers and other road users. We share a common aspiration to share to see the minibus taxi industry overcome its challenges, adapt in response to the demands of modern public transportation and ultimately to grow and to thrive. At the heart of all our endeavors is the formalization, the regulation and economic empowerment in the sector. This three-pronged strategy reflects the recommendations of the National Taxi Task Team set up in 1995 to look at challenges facing the industry. Now, 25 years later, we are taking stock of how far we have come. From this Lekhota, we need to come up with concrete measures to ensure the long-term sustainability of this important industry. We have to address several challenges that have tarnished the reputation of the industry. These include the issue of labor relations and allegations of exploitation of workers, the high number of road accidents involving taxis, the industry's response to the rise of e-hailing services and compliance with tax laws. We also need to address the conflict resulting to competition over routes and the associated acts of violence and criminality that we often see. Just as the industry must itself address and overcome issues of safety and violence, we as government remain committed to driving interventions that must strengthen the industry. That is why among the issues that we will be discussing at this Lekhotla is that of subsidization. We have invested substantially as a government in the taxi recapitalization program, as you well know, and will continue to leverage the, its potential. We will be giving renewed attention to supporting business growth in the sector, especially to empower previously disadvantaged individuals, such as women. I'm pleased that issues like access to finance and skills development will also be discussed here because they are crucial in determining whether a fledgling taxi business succeeds or fails. Formalization means greater regulation and the compact that must emerge from this Lakota must be anchored in that most important of values that we have embraced as South Africans, the rule of law. That the law is the supreme, supreme instrument that we have in our country. We must eradicate illegal operations that affect both the industry and government and are a catalyst to conflict. Illegal operations threaten the safety of passengers and open the door for licensing and insurance fraud. Given its financial size, formalizing the taxi industry is a vital step towards ensuring its contribution to the national tax revenue base. And, imp and importantly, formalization will benefit not just operators, but workers who will be able to benefit from social support like the Unemployment Insurance Fund and training funded by the Skills Development Levy. We must speak as one on the need for professionalism. This Lakota must be a turning point for an industry that is too often 
associated with disregard for the rule of law and the rules of the road, the abuse of customers and conflict. We must seriously and honestly confront the associations of the taxi industry with sexism and gender-based violence. We must work together as government and all industry stakeholders to ensure that women are safe, but they must also feel safe when they are traveling by taxi, free of abuse, free of being degraded, free of being called names, and even in our taxi ranks, free of being whistled at and free of being called names. We must respect the women of our country. As we rebuild our economy in the wake of COVID-19, the taxi industry needs and will receive our full support. You are a critical part of the South African economic as well as society. You create businesses and support jobs, both directly and indirectly. And as the sector, you, are, you have demonstrated clearly during this pandemic that you remain committed to playing your part as responsible citizens. And I want to thank you for the role that you have played during this pandemic. The taxi industry has been active in driving government's message around social distancing and good hygiene in its operations. And I know that you also had to sacrifice a great deal at the height of having to deal with this pandemic. It reduced your profits, it reduced a whole number of capabilities that you have. And the nation thanks you for the role that you played. And it was difficult for you in your operations, but you complied with the loading regulations that were put in place during the lockdown. I want to thank, take this opportunity to thank the industry for its support. You have helped keep our people safe and you save lives. Since the advent of democracy, government has prioritized forging durable and lasting social compacts with the industry in support of transportation. If we are to renew and sustain our social compact during this time of rebuilding, it is vital that we work for unity within the taxi industry. The industry needs to be able to speak with one voice and act together in advancing the common interests of all stakeholders. Our economic reconstruction and recovery plan sets out a number of interventions to spur economic activity on, to create jobs, and to embark on renewed industrialization. If we are to meet the targets we have set ourselves, an efficient, safe, reliable public transport system will be key to the transport of the people who work in our country. What we strive for is for all forms of public transit to be integrated to allow people to seamlessly make use of all modes available. It is only through an integrated system that we are able to offer the best value for money and convenience to the public. Since its inception, the taxi industry has been a lifeline to our people. You are making a difference in the lives of citizens on a daily basis, whether it is a grandmother who needs to go collect her pension, you are there. Whether it is a worker on the way to an, an office or a factory, 
you are at the forefront. Whether it is a learner who needs to go to school or college or university, you provide the transport. We salute you for all you do to keep our country going and we give you our assurance that we remain committed to doing whatever is necessary to bring the industry into the mainstream of our economy so that the invaluable service that you provide can be improved. As I have called on other sectors that are key to our economy, let us use this opportunity presented by COVID-19 to build better, to build our economy, and to make sure that we reposition the economy of our country. And with these words, I wish you well in your Lekota. I know it's going to be robust, exciting deliberations over the next three days. But lastly, I must thank the leadership of the taxi industry for continuing to work with Minister Mbalula and his colleagues as we try to ensure that the taxi industry is better positioned. The interest that Minister Mbalula has shown me in developing your industry, in making sure that we do good by your industry, is quite impressive. And I want to applaud him for providing the leadership, but also for being courageous enough to want to take this industry to an, a, a higher level. And I'll urge you, let us work with Minister Mbalula and his colleagues, collectively as stakeholders, to take our taxi industry to another level, a better level, a more progressive level, and a level that is underpinned by a great vision to make the taxi industry one of the best transport modes in our country. With these words, I thank you, and thank you for allowing me to speak to you from a virtual platform. I'm sorry once again that I could not be with you in person. Thank you very much, Program Director, and thank you all. Thank you very much, Mr. President. You've highlighted important issues for the industry, the compact, the role of the industry that has been played in the COVID pandemic, safety for women, the unity of the industry, and the importance of an integrated transport system. May I at this point ask that we conclude our virtual connection uh, transmission sessions by asking that we connect to Minister Mbalula who would be able to address us and then we come back to our speakers on the platform. Can we connect with Minister Mbalula please? Mr. President you are released thank you very much for your keynote address Minister Mbalula the Minister of Transport, over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Program Director. Uh, His Excellency, the President of the Republic, President Mata Mela, Cyril Ramaphosa, Deputy Minister, Mary Kennedy Magazi, members of the Executive Councils, responsible for transport, roads and traffic safety all of this will not be possible without you i wish to thank you as my colleagues for taking matters of the taxi industry to heart and giving leadership in all your provinces i wish to express my gratitude and uh, all of us at transport for your continued uh, leadership the Director General, Mr. Alec Muyemi, the 
president of uh, South African Local Government Association, SALGA, an important partner in this journey. President of the South African National Taxi Council, Mr. Philip Daibosch, and your leadership collective, uh, the entire leadership collective from the provinces and at national level. Provincial Santago leaders, association leaders, esteemed guests, ladies and gentlemen, and members of the media for giving coverage and for supporting and giving life to the journey we have embarked upon of uh, ensuring the industry to another level. This national tax in Lukota takes place at the backdrop of the October Transport Month, a period where we showcase our achievements as a sector and how we continue to transform the lives of ordinary people through investments in transport infrastructure. This Lukota and the outcomes it must deliver are firmly grounded in our broader vision for a public transport system that is responsive to the needs of the people, playing its part in the economic value chain. This should not be another talk shop that produces more resolutions, but rather a platform where we must be bold and step out of our comfort zones and deliver a pact that will enjoin us to take decisive steps in turning around the fortunes of this industry. This is a sunshine industry endowed with endless opportunities and possibilities and unraveled potential. As pioneers and trailblazers who grew this industry from humble beginnings, you soldiered on when the odds were stacked against you. The events that came to pass in the 1980s shaped and defined the character of the industry. The consensus that emerged out of the National Taxi Task Team established by the first administration laid down the foundation for the future that we seek. It set in motion a developmental trajectory that will not only transform the face of the industry, but has tremendous potential to position it as a major player in the country's economy. Ours is to take the processes that emerge from the national task team to their logical conclusion. We must deliver a taxi industry that is formalized and empowered and is subject to the rule of law. We echo indeed the expressed views and position of government by our president. While we may celebrate the many achievements of the taxi industry, we must equally confront the bad and the ugly. If this industry is to transcend its character as violent, unprofessional, and undermines the rule of law with impunity, this we must push back in terms of the decisions that we are going to take in this Lakota. Unity in the industry is sacrosanct, and we must eliminate the perverse incentives for conflict and violence. The pact we must emerge with out of this Lakota must demonstrate the seriousness with which we regard this matter. It is time the taxi industry spoke out against violence, which you do most of the time, but now in unison and in action to proclaim for all to hear, not in our name. Nelson Mandela delivering his State of the Nation address in February 1996 had this to say about the taxi industry, I quote, a particular feature of crime in our country is the violence 
afflicting KwaZulu Natal. The taxi industry, as well as bizarre incidents of gang warfare and other matters. By any name and under any disguise, this is criminal conduct and it should be dealt with as such. Close quote. Realizing the formalization, regulation, and empowerment of this industry will be the game changer required to fundamentally transform the face of South Africa's public transport system. When the first democratic government came into power in 1994, it inherited a taxi industry that was in a state of crisis. The National Taxi Trust Team was established in April 1995 with a mandate to investigate the problems and issues within the taxi industry and formulate solutions and policy options. This was meant to ensure that the long-term sustainability of the industry, positioning it to play an equitable and competitive role as an integral part of an effective and efficient public transport system. It is evident that despite government intervention to support the taxi industry through numerous initiatives, the industry is still characterized by oversupply, decreasing revenue, poor infrastructure, and uncontrolled competition on routes. This has become a source of ongoing conflict and violence. This national taxi Lhuta is meant to address challenges facing this industry and achieve consensus on the blueprint of the future taxi industry and cut on formalization and subsidized industry as an integral part of a broader economic empowerment model. And I wish to state that with regard to the intervention government has made ex gratia once off intervention of uh, supporting the industry during COVID-19. Government is still committed to that. And we will, as a matter of agency, taking the issues forward, interrogate all the issues that are outstanding on the table in relation to the prohibition of the implementation of the 1.135 billion rand taxi uh, intervention or relief uh, that was endorsed by cabinet. What uh, we will examine with the industry is among others the issues that they've raised with regard to this uh, that prohibit uh, them accessing uh, the fund. And in this particular instance, we've got no intention to keep that money. We want to disperse it as fast as we can uh, to all those who are actually affected who will come to the fore in order to benefit. If there are other mechanisms besides the ones that were put in place, uh, I've mandated the Director General to meet with all the stakeholders to actually examine this point bring matters to the minister so that I can take them back to cabinet so that we can bring closure before end of the year on the matter of the taxi relief effort. We are very much committed to unity and cohesion. I'm fully aware that uh, some members of the taxi industry have decided not to be part of this taxi, the Huta, a matter that... Uh, I've taken to heart and I've raised with them and invited them to come to the Lekhutla to be part of this. But nonetheless, the resolution of this Lekhutla will be implemented and will be able to take them forward. And that those who have chosen not to be part of this Lekhutla for the reasons that they have actually advanced to me as the minister up until last night in our consultations, we will be in a position to continue to engage on those matters. But I can assure you that uh, when we conclude the pact in this Lekhuta, government it is ready to support the industry like the president has said, echoing what the president has said. The industry, top on the agenda, is formalization, formalization, formalization. 
government is ready to formalize and regulate the industry working with you. We need your input. We have now arrived. Like uh, the Zulu uh, word will say, uh, this is the end of it all. It is now or never. And uh, we've got to make it happen for future generations. 1996 came, and now we are at the point where it is now or never. We must agree on this. We must agree on the empowerment model we are going to implement and how we are going to support the taxi industry economic expansion. We must agree, most importantly, on subsidization. Now, all of this can't happen without the other. It's a dialectical process. None of each point we are making are exclusive to each other. Formalization, integrated, uh, I mean, in, uh, uh, ensuring that the industry is fully regulated, ensuring that it is empowered and subsidized, ensuring that it is uh, professionalized, which will include uh, abiding with the labor laws of the country and all of that. All of these elements are not mutually exclusive. Unity is sacrosanct. We know that uh, there are issues with regard to who is in charge. We as government, we recognize Sataku, and it has not changed. In terms of this Likuta, we are examining that particular point. And the government has, from inception, recognized Sataku, endorsed sub Sataku, supported Sataku. And we have put on the agenda of this Likuta the issue of unity. I'm prepared. One of the things which need to be considered for unity for this Likutla is how do we bring other structures that have broken away or have not become part of this bigger body of Santaco? Uh, how do we bring them on board? Under what auspices? What is the mechanism that is right for government to basically engage with the taxi industry? At the present moment, it is Santaco that we recognize. It is not by accident that Santago has played a leading role in the convening of this Likutla. It is precisely, it is not because some people are in the pockets of anybody or co-opted. Um, it is simply because that's how things are. And we have invited others to come on board uh, in order to unpack and deal decisively with disunity in the industry. I know uh, this matter and the approach we have taken has not set well with those who recognize themselves as having equal status in a democratic country. They pursue a line of diversity and all of that. It's fine. We are all for the constitution, but we are equally all for the unity of the industry and formalization. I have got no time to waste time. As we speak, and we agree from this Likutla, I'm ready to go with my team. I'm ready to go as of the 1st of April next year to implement what has been agreed in this Likutla in relation to formalization. So when we say robust, we mean bring what you want on the table. Even those who are not here, and yesterday I've engaged with the leadership of NTA and I've explained to them that as the minister, I'm ready to also take their input on board. But over and above that, as the minister of transport, I'm ready to get NTA around the table and Satako to speak about issues of unity. And I'm ready to appoint a team of eminent persons of integrity uh, who will basically mediate in those discussions. Because we can't go on talking past each other going forward. We know that we might, as and when we conclude, there will be other issues we may not have concluded fully, but the principal issues have, as demonstrated through the provincial Makutlas, it is very clear that we are not far from each other. We are one. I am equally echoing the sentiment of the president. We want to bring the taxi industry 
with full speed, full steam into the economic mainstream, moving away from the fringes of a, a formal economy and operating in the informal economy. We want the industry to be here. 40 billion rand injection in the growth domestic product of this country, annual turnover. We want it to be seen through the value chain of what this industry has invested in. It is no talk shop, take it to heart, let's take decisions. Let us not delay ourselves with peripheral issues, uh, which we've got the capacity to resolve. What the country is yearning for is an industry that is formalized, that is professional, and everything else. And the government has got to lead from the front. Hence, even our first day in office, we started to conceptualize this Lekhutla. The pandemic, COVID-19, interrupted. And I'm coming here with the mandate of cabinet. I'm coming here with the mandate of our government to support this industry. I'm coming here not with a lot of slogans and insurrectionary phrase mongering. I'm coming here with a concrete plan to take you out of the dull drums of oppression. And uh, let's go and walk this final mile with me in order to formalize, build the industry, and make it a point that uh, it is celebrated for generations to come. And that this country, South Africa, like Nelson Mandela says, let freedom reign, liberate all our people. The meaning of that freedom and liberation must be seen in the taxi industry. If we talk about industries of the disadvantaged and less empowered, the taxi industry is one of them. And this freedom must breathe life to that particular uh, existence of this industry. That's why we say... It's a sunshine, because to us, it's not dead. It's a sunrise. To us, it is not dead. There is a future, and that's where we are going. And I want to thank all of you. We are with you, and we are together. The Deputy Minister, uh, we just have got to take precautions, because we have been advised. We are not sick. We've got no symptoms, and uh, I will be taking full uh, testing as I do from time to time. If I do have COVID, it will mean self-quarantine or quarantine going forward. At the present moment, so we're together. I'm with you through virtual and uh, we will be together throughout. And uh, wishing you all the best. And I want to thank the president uh, for being with us. And I want to thank everyone who have made it possible for us to be here. This is exciting with all the ramifications and challenges we are confronting. We are going to succeed and they're working together. I thank you. And I thank you. And I thank you. Thank you very much. Over to you, program director. Thank you very much to Minister Mbalula for that uh, very motivating input. Importantly, the minister highlighted the COVID-19 taxi relief and the measures that must be taken to ensure the full implementation and disbursement of those funds. The key message is formalization, formalization.